So we are presenting part of the, sec the second part of the project that you already saw, and it's called Canada. So we want to make the sketches, the 2D sketches, jump in 3D. That's our goal. So this is our team, multidisciplinary team with a lot of designer, marketing, and also competition designer. So what kind of problem are we trying to solve in the industry? Right now we are totally focused on 2D deliverable, with PDF, kind of a black hole of information. So how we can bring this paradigm shift, as defined by Thomas Kuhn, in a 3D environment where we can uh, actually perform better as designer. So this catch itself has a lot of knowledge. Its line, its thickness, the way which it drop require a lot of experience, a lot of past knowledge. How we can capture it and perform a 3D environment where everyone can understand. So as a use case, we put about a meeting internally in a team, but also a client meeting, where all of this metadata, the 3D part, can take to life and be connecting the computational part in the backend with other software like can be a VR software or AR like Unity or S3 like the project we've seen before. Sorry. So how these two these guys can jump in 3D and take a live. So we work in, in, in this part of the hackathon, totally on the back end. So we work a lot with the basically the GPU. The entire script was supposed to work with well with Torch, but now it's the commission in August, so we modify Torch. So the main part we take is the RGB channel and the depth. That's why the previous project is really crucial for us. It provides a gradient. Thanks to the gradient, we can add the depth of the vector. So based on these sketches, we need to clean the model itself. So we use a segmented segmentation to just clear the sky in order to don't confuse with the windows, that's really important because the reflection in the windows can increase the computational speed drastically. And this needs to happen in real time. That was the main convenience part. The control edges need to be redefined in order to have a really good performance with edge detection and so on. The second part that is based on a paper um, in 2017, we developed during this weekend a proof of concept with crossover taking all this input data. And we use uh, random compute and rest over a previous project in another appetite to develop that. So this is how it works. We start with the update you've seen before in a 2D sketch. And this kind of gradient that we have inform our neural network. So we take also this sketch in the polyline that are defined also the thickness and the speed. So if you draw fast, the points are gonna be less. And so on. So we take this sketch in a perspective sketch and we transfer that in 3D. Has to be only one sketch. And I have to say tiny meeting, but also you don't need to draw multiple sketches. And this is also an educational purpose, how we can embed and empower designer to work in 2D, not to draw something VR or AR, but just have the shape and visualization in AR to drive the conversation. So that's really important to have a real-time 3D model, even simplified, can be a conceptual, but can have an in, in itself some of the knowledge like the volume, the area, the cost, but the connection with the environment around. So that's why we want to get with it right inside with S3. So this is a, a new way to describe a data-driven sketches to capture the designer and bring them in our 3D world as computational designer. So to have a dialogue with experience design with normal computer in 3D. So thanks a lot. We have a quick uh, demonstration of the part related to the uh, sorry to the paper introduced. It's called the Arctic Surface Prediction of the 3D object. It was basically trained with ShapeNet. And ShapeNet has a big data set of 3D models, especially airplane and cars. What we want to produce is a 3D the simple uh, different option with a simple box basically and use a voxelization of three so um, and so that the part that we use was random compute so
So all the scripts that we develop on Grasshopper is connected with a server that generates the general journey right away. So this is a the small proof of concept we perform. So we take this sort of simple tune, honestly, for this project, but we were able to transfer right away and final compute right in the browser. Thanks. I guess I'm, I'm having a hard, I, I totally get the idea. I think it's an amazing idea. I'm not quite sure what got accomplished. So can you actually go from one of these very yeah. simple sketches to producing a cube? And then how, how far can you extend that today? So we can dive into the grasshopper part. Uh, is that what you want to explain? Yeah. That's the main part of the achieve, basically. So the grasshopper script was set up to basically identify major landmarks within a sketch. Um, so it began by cleaning up the data, first isolating vertical lines from horizontal lines, discovering where the vanishing points of um, horizontal lines would be on the building. And then uh, after it ran through all that classification, which it used of different kind of linear regression techniques, it would use trigonometric techniques to actually reconstruct the 3D space. So looking at the foreshortening on the horizontal edges and then reconstructing the actual dimensions that would be represented from that sketch. So if you get to another slide in the presentation, um, that actually kind of demonstrates that workflow. So we were able to take in vectorized sketches. That's one of the important things that we received um, from our partners was sketches that actually had center points. Um, and we were able to isolate those center lines and then identify, again, where the horizon lines were. Where the okay, so you were able to go from the green thing to the gray thing, is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And it works for most green things. And it works for <laughs> some gray things <laughs> with some level of predictability. So I, I asked this again maybe before, but I. I when you go from the green thing to the gray thing, <clears throat> why does a neural net, you know, the network of image bank, what is the image bank playing in this process? Yeah, so the important part there, we're out of time, the important part there was uh, kind of isolating large scale features from small scale features. So when you're feeding a script just a bunch of lines, you have to figure out a way to tell it that, okay, these lines, they belong to the kind of large scale structure of your sketch. And then there's this descending gradient of recognition going towards kind of smaller details. One very small question. How do you imagine implementing something, oh, that's not what I meant? Trying to sketch. There is something. <laughs> <laughs> no, the idea of this is that it's every bit as malleable as a sketch, um, so that you're taking the workflow of a simple sketching process, and it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for you on the backside, producing 3D geometry. So, I mean, I mean, it's a really simple uh, things, yes. concept of 3D volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that yeah. have to have to be in those because the the much man in the beginning of the concept. All right, let's hear it. Thank you. I see line, or elbow, or ceiling fan, or diving board, I see pillow, or snowflake, or book, or envelope, I see megaphone, 
or map. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. 